We are talking Bitcoin. We've been waiting for it all show. Bitcoin futures tumbling today, and Scott says there's even more downside ahead for the cryptocurrency. So, Scott, what's the trade on this? Uh, I want to, no, no surprise, Jackie, yes. I want to be a seller of the October contract, the CBOE Bitcoin futures, that's a single Bitcoin in the futures contract, 6,400 even. Uh, my target to the downside, not going to be crazy, target to the downside, 59.50, about where it stalled out to the downside last time. And my stop to the upside is going to be 6,600. Why do I want to be short? Because it's Bitcoin. It has no fundamental value. We're in the middle of this great unraveling of this colossal bubble. And I think that people are going to, uh, the only thing that they have going for them if they're long is hope. And Jackie, we know that hope is a horrible strategy. You've shot the, the hope balloon down. Um, <laughs> Brian, do you agree with Scott's trade? Well, Scott and I have fundamental differences on this area. Uh, you know, he, him saying basically Bitcoin goes to zero is crazy. You know, the target of 59.50, if we do break that 6,000 level, I, I'm definitely concerned about that, that we go down and we push even farther through that target. That would be a little concerning to me. But I think we're in inning three or four here of a bottoming process from the bubble that Scott talked about that popped and burst and came back down. When you look at the value of what a currency means, it's the number of transactions that take place and the size of transactions. And when we have Overstock.com accepting Bitcoin, when you have places like Subway, Starbucks coming online accepting Bitcoin, McDonald's may be doing that. The number of transactions will be increasing over the next year or so. And when we get that, that should increase the value of, the, of what you want to call it, a currency, some sort of exchange of payment uh, a system. That has a factor, whether you like it or not, whether you think it's real or not. Number of transactions, the size of transactions matter. And then for that reason, I think we continue to have that bottoming process of right above the 6,000 level. And I'd rather play it to the long side here, Jackie. Okay. The number of transactions, Jackie, I mean, the number of transactions is, is irrelevant. It's absolutely irrelevant. But let's, let's talk about Brian's thesis. Right now, it takes about 10 minutes to confirm a single, single Bitcoin transaction. It takes about 10 minutes. If I use my debit card, we can do it in about 10 seconds. <laughs> Uh, the number of transactions that can be confirmed or verified is, uh, I could count them on fingers of two hands, uh, and it's, once again, let's compare it to my debit card, we can do millions every second. But that's, that is, that, that is uh, completely irrelevant because Bitcoin has zero value, zero value. The dollar I have in my pocket, people who don't like fiat currencies can say it doesn't have any value either, but you know what? If I go and want to buy a cup of coffee with it, they're forced to accept it. They're forced to accept it. If I want to pay yeah. my if I want and to now, pay my mortgage, they're forced now to accept it. Now talking fiat, about coffee. fiat currency is a great thing because the fiat part of it is the feature, not the bug. So speaking of coffee, Starbucks will accept your Bitcoin payment. So there you go. You can go buy some coffee with your Bitcoin instead, instead of a dollar. A piece of paper of a dollar is a piece of paper. Let's be honest here. The reason why it's been accepted globally is because it has become highly transactive. No. There's size That's transactions right. that That's happen. Right. People accept it as a form of payment for goods and services, and that can happen in any form of payment. It's a piece of paper transferring one that, point that's to the other. That's not why it has value. It has value because people are forced to say it, are forced to give it value. You may not like that, but that's the way it is. And Bitcoin has zero fundamental value. You say it's silly that it will go to, a, to, to zero. I bet you it goes to zero before it gets back up to 19,000. Scott, how much more right, scale so then, would it have to get for you to take it a little more seriously? Um, In terms of acceptance as, uh, as, as at, a currency? At, at, a, at, a re, at a reasonable price, it would have to, just the, fun, the, the transactional aspect of it would have to work. It would have to work as well as my debit card. If it doesn't work as well as my debit card, then why in the world would I ever use it? Because I'm taking on additional risk that it has no value. So it has to it has to work better. It has to work better than what exists right now. And it does none of those things. Well, first of all, in the cryptocurrency world, Bitcoin doesn't have to be the leader in, in creating these fast, easy transactions that Scott's talking about. It, but what it can act is, is sort of the store value where all cryptocurrency comes in through Bitcoin and, and, and reconverts out somewhere else. So I think it's becoming a leader in that sense. I think you're looking at, at basically Bitcoin, you're looking at something like Ripple, although maybe a little bit overvalued at these levels, that, that these types of things will be the leader in the cryptocurrency world. You'll see more and more blockchain occurring. Walmart is saying, if you want to go out and buy a piece of lettuce, they want to start to track that with blockchain in order to track 
where that piece of lettuce is going all the way to the end user. That's mm. coming down the pipeline. Blockchain is here to stay. There will be more and more transactions taking place. IBM is a huge backer behind all of this, and that will start to develop a better, stronger, faster network that will take place. You We're in early stages right now. Gentlemen. This thing is not going to zero. You can't confuse blockchain with Bitcoin. They're two entirely separate things. That's like saying that uh, I love the, the technology of the internal combustion engine, and I do. But you know what, Jackie? My 1973 Ford Pinto is still worthless.